In the mid-90s, a big screen Iron Man movie did seem more than a little bit far-fetched. People just simply didn't believe in the idea. However, that didn't stop 20th Century Fox from realizing Iron Man's on-screen potential, and they would hire Jeff Vintar to write them an Iron Man movie. So, what if it was made? In 1996, Marvel would sell the Iron Man film rights to 20th Century Fox. Nicolas Cage would express serious interest in obtaining the part of Iron Man. Tom Cruise was also in consideration, and reportedly hoped to both star in and produce the film. Peter Dinklage was supposedly in mind for the role of MODOK, and Cameron Diaz for the role of Pepper Potts. Fox would hire Jeff Vintar and Stan Lee to pen an Iron Man script in 1997. Their version would be titled The Iron Man, and would have featured a Tony Stark who built up this company during the Red Scare. The world has mixed feelings on Stark Industries, with many believing that Tony doesn't care about the sanctity of human life, but that's not true at all, and what he does is actually taking quite the emotional toll on him. However, with the Cold War now over, Tony wants to become more of a humanitarian, and designs the Rescue Redeemer armor, a suit which can wrap itself around injured people people and walk them to safety, while simultaneously protect them from harm and provide medical assistance. The presentation for the suit goes really well, however, an executive named Jeremy Bland, of course, wants to weaponize the suits, but Tony refuses. The villains, Virus, Jigsaw, and Whiplash would then try to assassinate Tony, shooting him with a bullet that gets lodged in his heart. However, Tony crawls into one of his Redeemer suits which saves his life. Tony, now on the run, would break into his company's main rival, Advanced Idea Mechanics, or AIM, and would learn that MODOK and the Chameleon were the ones responsible for the assassination attempt, and they planned to steal his designs. Tony would then retreat to his own personal laboratory, and would upgrade the Redeemer armor to become Iron Man. MODOK is now very scared of Tony, and frames him for the death of a civilian, thus turning the public against Iron Man, and allowing Jeremy Bland to take over the company. However, in the end, he would defeat MODOK and company, expose Bland's alliance with AIM, retake control of Stark Industries, and begin a relationship with his assistant, Pepper Potts. However, despite Fox liking the script, they thought it sounded too costly, and would hire Jeffrey Kane to retool the script in May of 1999, with Quentin Tarantino in consideration to direct. However, Fox ultimately decided that the effort just wasn't worth it. They were already working on X-Men and Fantastic Four films, and would decide to prioritize those movies instead, and thus they would sell the rights to Iron Man to New Line Cinema in December of that same year. So what do I think of this version of Iron Man? Honestly, I really like it. Um, I, I love the idea of Tony Stark being a Cold War profiteer. That that honestly sounds like a perfect origin story for him. Uh, at least in my opinion, it does. Uh, and then you could have his father be a World War II or, you know, Korean War profiteer or something like that. You know, that would make sense. Um, MODOK as the main villain sounds like a really good idea for a first Iron Man movie. And no disrespect to Jeff Bridges and Obadiah Stane. I don't like the character that much. I mean, it was ref it was nice that he had a personal connection with the Stark family, but he just was boring. I'm sorry, he was kind of a boring first villain in my opinion, and I do wish they had gone with somebody more distinct. Um, and I do think Modok is definitely that. As far as all the other villains go, though, I I do think they sound a little tacked on. I, if, if it were up to me, I would just have it be Modok and then like one other villain. Like I would probably just have it be Modok and the Chameleon or Modok and 
Whiplash, uh, or even Modok and Warmonger, just like something like that. But Modok does sound like a really good first villain choice. And Peter Dinklage, that is perfect casting for Modok, if you ask me. Um, Tom Cruise is Iron Man. He would be fantastic, of course. He's been fan casted in that role for so long, and you know, rightly so. He'd be great. Um, I don't think his height would be a problem. I know people say he's too short. I don't, I don't think that really matters when you're flying around in an iron suit. I don't think people care about how tall you are. Um, and Nicolas Cage, I also think would be kind of perfect. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, he really wanted to be in a comic book movie. And even though I find the Ghost Rider movies entertaining, I definitely think he would have been an easier fit for Iron Man, at least in my opinion, especially in the 90s. Because uh, in the 90s, he really kind of was Tony Stark in a way, except, you know, not as full of himself. But, you know, um, <laughs> uh, I think that the CGI by this point was definitely ready for an Iron Man movie. Um, and yeah, I mean, Cameron Diaz is Pepper Potts. Sounds great to me because Cameron Diaz is fantastic. Um, I wish she didn't retire because um, she uh, she was such a terrific actress. Um, but yeah, and, and Jeff Vitar, man, what an underrated screenwriter. Seriously, so many of his scripts have not been produced. And it's sad because his scripts are so good. Um, and now, th would this version of the movie be better than the 2008 one? In some ways, yes. As I said, I think Modoc is a better first villain than Warmonger, at least in my opinion. Um, or maybe Warmonger, but just done differently. But, you know... Um you know, and I definitely like the casting choices, um, and yeah, I like it, honestly. I just think it's a little overstuffed with villains, and I don't think his origin is as good, you know what I mean? I do like him being in Afghanistan and being kidnapped by terrorists and, you know, kind of learning, you know, the effect that his weapons have had on the world that way. I do kind of prefer that, uh, but I don't mind this version either because I do admit, the version we got would probably only work in the 2000s but you know the 90 what they did with the 90s version with you know the cold war still being at the back of people's or like you know still in people's minds you know what i mean uh i i think that would be cool too um ultimately though i am glad we got the one we got even though this one does sound pretty cool uh if they ever like i know marvel doesn't do this because they're not dc dc does this a lot but if marvel were to ever start doing animated adaptations of canceled scripts i would absolutely love to see this one i really would it's so good and please hollywood please hire jeff vitar more like please um I, I i'm not on too many social medias i'm not on twitter um but uh but tweet tweet that they need to hire him more because seriously he's so good he's so talented uh and they keep tweaking his scripts and making them worse uh like he he did the script for iRobot and even though that movie's underrated it could have been a lot better and, and Vitar's original script for that was a lot better so you know, like please hire Jeff uh Jeffrey Vitar more uh I would absolutely love that um and I love this version of Iron Man but uh let me know in the comments down below what you think of this version of Iron Man would you prefer it to the Robert Downey Jr. trilogy or or would you have still liked to see the Robert Downey Jr. ones instead? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And also, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with all of your friends and all your various social media platforms. And speaking of social media, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Rinsler underscore production. And I'll see all of you tomorrow in the next video.